we start with the planning process, which is usually in April or May. We come out here with large uh, planting machines and we'll put a bed up here, which this is a typical sweet potato bed. A sweet potato bed is planted at about 12 inches apart. It's uh, 80 inches wide and we found this to be the best spacing. Right here on the sweet potato, um, if you dig down, first thing you're gonna notice is there's just, uh, it's pure sand. Sweet potatoes grow the best in sand. They like the uh, San Joaquin Valley, which right here in this area from uh, Modesto to Merced, it's probably the best um, sand soil that you'll find in the San Joaquin Valley. Reason why sweet potatoes need so much uh, sand is you want to have um, the best quality that you can and San Joaquin sand in this area is probably the best quality soil that you can find. And if you dig down into the into the base there you'll see a, a stem and a root here. Once you know the first one I dig. <laughs> so you're pulling up and you're getting a nice sweet potato underneath that stem. So a stem will grow down and these sweet potatoes, they're not actually uh, what you're used to as potatoes. A sweet potato is actually a swollen root. It's not a tuber. So each one of these roots that grows off the stem is what the sweet potato uses to store its nutrients for the next year. So you'll see on every stem here, there's probably anywhere from four to 10 sweet potatoes that are growing on a stem. I'll show you a plant here. So this is a, a sweet potato plant. In the planting season, which is around April and May, we're growing literally thousands of these plants in the greenhouse. We take the plant from UC Davis, which will take a sweet potato plant, clean it up for us, they test it for any viruses or diseases, and after that plant has been cleaned up, they'll set, send it down to us, we'll put it into our greenhouse and grow it through the winter time. When the springtime comes around, we'll take the plants and we'll cut them and we'll bring them out here to the field and we call that our transplanting process. So each one of these plants, there's about uh, 13,500 plants that we'll put into one acre at a 12 inch spacing on the bed that I was describing to you earlier. Another really good thing about the San Joaquin Valley is the heat, the sunshine. We've got some of the best weather in all the United States. Sweet potatoes love a lot of heat. They love a lot of sun. They love um, just the climate that you get here in the San Joaquin Valley. Um, a sweet potato can grow from anywhere 90 days up to about 150 days. That growing season needs just the, um, the extra amount of heat and sunshine that you get. So this is a number one variety of sweet potatoes. Um, you're looking for just a nice blocky type sweet potato. Um, you're looking for a nice good skin there. Sweet potatoes can scratch very easily coming up on the belt. That's another reason why you want uh, just a nice sandy soil. But you look at this skin here. This is a red variety. Uh, we call it a Diane, um, a Diane type or a red variety type. So as the potatoes come up onto the machine, each crew member is grading for a type of size. You get your larger ones up in the front, which is, we call those the US number ones. You put your mediums in the middle and you put your smaller ones in the back. Um, the mediums and the smaller ones, um, they make a nice personal size potato. So a personal baking potato, um, that usually works out for your best. Your larger jumbos, number ones, those are great for if you're gonna serve you know, a large dish, um, if you're cooking up for you know, something that takes several pounds of sweet potatoes, you wanna use your bigger one, it's a little more cost effective. Um, what's nice about this variety is uh, on the inside, you get uh, a nice orange color, deep orange, which is what we're looking for. Um, you start to see some of the milk that comes through on the sweet potato. Um, again, that's all uh, adding to the taste and the flavor, that rich, dark orange color, that's your beta carotene. You know the sweet potato's high in nutrients and that beta carotene color comes out in this one. It's also one of the sweetest varieties that we have. Um, 
Diane variety, these red varieties, you'll see them in sweet potato fries. They're also a great baker. You can slice them up, put a little butter and a little olive oil on it and um, cook it up. Usually it tastes really good. And then the smaller size sweet potatoes back here, uh, these are packed for a mini grade, which is kind of a new thing in sweet potatoes. You're seeing uh, it maybe in your restaurants with a steak or you know, filet mignon or something, you're having a mini size sweet potato. It's kind of a um, nice delicatessen thing. Um, you missed this probably about a week or so. These uh, beds right here were just covered in lush green plants. What we do is we go through and we mow that down, um, usually about a week or two weeks in front of the harvesting uh, time. What that does is it helps that potato cure underground. You wanna have uh, that, that vine and that, those roots as dry as you possibly can when they're coming up. You know, a really nice thing about sweet potatoes and all through the central California is all on drip irrigation. Years ago, we used to do uh, row irrigation, which we use siphon pipes, and we would flood down the centers of the row with water. That vine would soak up the water, and then for seven days it would dry out. And so we had to really be careful not to overwater uh, the crops because you can cause a lot of damage. But with water scarcity, with you know the drought, the sweet potato industry has turned all the way over to drip irrigation now. So each one of these beds are set up with one drip tape tube right down the middle and that gives us the ability to put the right nutrients on the potato to put the right amount of water you're not over watering you're not under watering and as you can see in the sand here um, you can underwater which can be an issue so um, the drip irrigation really has helped the sweet potato industry quite a bit save water but put the right amount of nutrients on and not waste nutrients so sweet potatoes can um, you know they use a lot of water they use a lot of nutrients and so by flood irrigating or, or siphon uh, irrigating, you can actually put, uh, you can over fertilize. And so with drip, you're actually putting on right exactly what you need. So this is the uh, Bellevue variety of sweet potato. It's under the kind of the orange class or several different types of uh, orange sweet potatoes. This is the Bellevue one. What you see on that stem right there is a nice yield of sweet potatoes. It's kind of the personal size that you're looking for. Um, that's a, a U.S. number one size right there. This orange type sweet potato is the most common in the U.S. If you snap it off and look, it's got a nice uh, orange color on the inside. It's good, strong, uh, sturdy sweet potato, good skin on there. That's a nice baking size sweet potato right there. In California, we grow about 22 to 23,000 acres of sweet potatoes. Most of that, probably 90% of that uh, 20, 22,000 is grown right here in the Livingston, Merced County area. And the varieties that grow the best here are the orange and the red varieties, which is what we have in this field right here. Uh, the orange and red varieties are, are the ones that are orange on the inside, that baking variety. Um, different parts of the San Joaquin Valley the soil does change slightly. You get sandy, sandy loam. Um, the Atwater loamy sand is, is pretty well known for some of the varieties of sweet potatoes. And you can find all that right here again in the San Joaquin Valley. So um, we like to use fields that have good access to um, the mountain runoff water. We call that surface water. So we're within a very good irrigation district. We don't just use well water. In fact, we sweet potatoes prefer the uh, mountain spring runoff water so we try to find areas that have a good access of the surface water which this is probably some of the best water in California it comes all off the Sierra Nevadas uh, the Sierra Nevada water just really um, uh, probably some of the best quality water in the world so we're very fortunate in the San Joaquin Valley is known for growing just about any type of produce and I think a lot of that has to do with not only the climate with the heat and the sunshine, but also the good quality of water. So just getting a couple of these uh, potatoes off there. Um, that size and that shape is something that we really go after in our breeding programs. 
Sweet potatoes are bred all the way back at the university level. Uh, UC Davis is where we get most of our uh, sweet potato plant stock. They'll take the different varieties and through a breeding program, um, crossbreeding with other varieties to try to find the right type of shape, the right type of skin, the flavor, the color on the inside. All of these are characteristics that make for a really good sweet potato. Once we take that variety from UC Davis, we'll, as I mentioned earlier, bring it down and put it in our greenhouse and we'll begin propagating that out. But when you get a, a plant that comes up off of the machine and you've got you know, a whole, uh, whole bunch of sweet potatoes that are really this size and this shape, that, that's, the, you know, that's the best you can do in a, in a yield. And that takes some, some growing practices and that takes some uh, really effort. You don't want to, as I mentioned earlier, over irrigate a sweet potato because this potato can, can swell up on you. This is a storage route, so the more that uh, water that you put in, the more nutrients you put in, you can really make a large sweet potato very easy by, by overdoing your crop. But a large sweet potato is not really what you want to find in the grocery store, a big old you know, watermelon sized sweet potato. You want to find something that is easy to cook, easy to bake, uh, is, has a good eye appeal to it, which this variety has a very good eye appeal. Uh, and you won't find this in other parts of the country or the other parts of the world. If you go to um, other parts of the country and you look for the sweet potatoes, because the soils aren't like they are here in California, you can get really a misshaped, ugly looking sweet potato. You can go to other countries and because the soil's not sandy, it's hard and clay and a really a heavy type soil, that potato doesn't come out with a nice shape that it gets here in California. So we're, we're, very, um, we're very blessed with the type of soil we have here in California. Yeah, so I guess why I like farming, um, it is the beautiful weather. I mean, this is all year long. You're, you're talking about some of the best uh, weather in, in, in all of California and all, all of the United States. We have some of the warmest days which are, are great for sweet potatoes because it gets, uh, gets so warm and hot and they need a lot of heat. But I guess I like growing in the Central Valley because of the, the type of community that we have with the sweet potato growing industry. A lot of farmers help each other. We, uh, we share a lot of uh, knowledge and advice. And look, I don't, you know, I don't know everything there is to know about sweet potatoes, but there's a wealth of knowledge of the guys that have you know, years before gone before me and, and really showed me a lot. So there is a community here. There's probably 90 growers of sweet potatoes in this um, uh, Merced County area. And those 90 growers, we collaborate together as much as we can. And so, I, you know, I really appreciate their wisdom and knowledge. I think another thing about growing in this area is um, it is an ag community, an ag farming area. Uh, California is, is rich in agriculture, and, and so you have other uh, commodities that you can work with. We work with a lot of different commodities to rotate our ground and rotate our soil. So. Uh, you might want to farm three years sweet potatoes in this field and then you might want to find another farmer that will come in and put uh, maybe almonds in for you know, a number of years or put corn in or because the San Joaquin Valley has so many different varieties of, and commodities we can work with each other to, to rotate the ground and I think that's, a, that's an advantage for, for this area is, is the amount of different varieties of commodities that we have. And you have to you have to love what you do. You have to love um, you know the commodity you grow, and, and we we have a love for sweet potatoes, and so we do want to treat them with a lot of care. And so when a, a potato is harvested, just the way that you hold it in your hand and, and the way you set it down in the bin, you want to take care of that because it can you know I'll show you just scratch really easily uh, as it's coming at the machine, and, and you don't want those scars on there. So you you want to be very careful how you're handling that potato and putting it into the bin. Uh, weeds are another big issue that, that we, we fight with out here and we do more organic farming than, than we've ever done before. Organic farming uh, and organic produce is on the rise and so with organic farming you don't have the ability to spray your weeds and so a lot of that is hand, uh, uh, hand labor by hoeing out or hand pulling the weeds out. A weed can go in and attack the, the, uh, the vine really easily. You can just have a few weeds grow around that vine and they can go down and they can choke it out and uh, take all the nutrients, take the water, and that plant could die uh, very early. So you've got to walk up and down these rows and, and you're looking for the different types of weeds that you've got to pull out and, and clean up. So there's a lot of hand weeding in it. In the packing house, when we pack them, just like how we harvested them, um, 
that potato is coming up on that belt and if I've done all the hard work out in the field making sure that you know I'm delivering a, a good quality potato into the packing house they've got to be able to pack it in a way that doesn't um, add to any damage or cause any more scratching than, than what's on the potato so in the packing house each potato is, is hand graded by size from the larger one all the way down to the smaller, uh, smaller one so there's a lot of uh, just hand labor dealing with. Sweet potatoes are probably one of the most labor intensive crops. Um, as you noticed on the harvester, we've got a, a crew that um, there's anywhere from six to seven workers that are on a machine. And that machine is harvesting about a half an acre a day. And so if you multiply the amount of acres, 22,000 acres in California by digging at a half acre a day and how many people are, are involved in that. And, and we really do value um, the workers that we have here. We have many uh, multi-generational families that work with us, you know, families that, um, that have partnered with us and, and take a lot of pride in, in what they do and, and producing the type of, of crop that we produce. One thing that's been very beneficial for the sweet potato industry is not our marketing campaign per se, like we're not uh, trying to push one uh, advertisement or one main campaign. What we're trying to do is educate families educate people on the nutrition in a sweet potato and so how do you do that you just talk about how good it is for you and it is it's the healthiest vegetable you can eat um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Center for uh, Science in Washington DC it came out listed the top 10 vegetables and they rated sweet potato as the number one vegetable because of the vitamins and minerals and fiber and calcium everything that you can find inside that sweet potato so what I need to do and what our industry needs to do is just talk about how good they are, how healthy they are, and how easy they are to, to cook and prepare. And we've had a number of different um, health food industries that have come along. You've got dietitians, you've got uh, chefs that are now talking about sweet potatoes because they're recognizing how healthy they are. And because there are so many diets now that sweet potatoes are conducive with, um, you're finding new recipes that I didn't even know about. So yeah, last night we had sweet potato noodles and I was like, my mind was blown. I'm like, as a kid, you know, we just sliced them up, put a little butter and, and salt and pepper on them. But now, you know, we're talking about steaming sweet potato noodles and putting, you know, olive oil and, and uh, sea salt and pepper on them and, and cooking them up and eating them. And, and they were delicious. Yeah, we're, we are fancy. We've got uh, sweet potato cubes. We have um, little slices that you can take. I've, I saw one recipe, they took sweet potato slices and they put them in a toaster and they toasted them, pulled them out, laid them down, put a, a half cooked you know, little egg on there with some salt and pepper. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's the sweet potato. So um, yeah, there's really a lot of things you can do with it. And we... Good morning, my name is Brad Rawls. I work with uh, Miniger Foods. We process sweet potatoes here. So today we're gonna take you through our plant where we're cutting some orange sweet potatoes and just show you guys how that process works. So back here, we're right now the potatoes are going into a uh, parasitic acid bath. Um, everything that we use is all organic and it will break down after the potatoes are, go through that bath and into the scrubbing and washing table. Um, it's just uh, it basically kills in everything that's on the potatoes and gets them ready to be processed and go into the plant where everything's clean. You can almost think of it as peroxide. Um, it goes and when it breaks down, it breaks down into oxygen and water, so it's nothing that's gonna you know, create any problems with the, uh, the consumption of potatoes. So from here, after it goes into the acid wash, the parasitic acid wash, it's gonna go into the plant. Um, from there, it's gonna go onto a grading table and I'll show you guys where it goes through the grading table and through the uh, brush scrubber to wash all the potato off. So we're at the grading table now, once all the potatoes come in. Uh, they'll go onto the grading table. We look for any defects or imperfections. Um, we'll cut those off or just uh, dispose of the potato before it goes into the scrub brusher and washing the potato, uh, getting it ready to be cut. So once the potatoes come out of the uh, brush scrubber that washes them. There's ozonated water that goes over the potatoes to make sure they're all clean. They go up into the uh, cutter where we're making half inch cubes. Once the cutting's done, it'll go through another wash that has ozonated water in it. 
and down over a magnet to make sure everything's clean and ready to be packaged. So where the potatoes are running across, there's actually a magnet there that would catch anything if there was something that made it through the processing. So from here, the uh, potatoes will go into a spinner where we're trying to get as much of the moisture out as we can. And uh, from there into being cooled and into the retail packaging. Um, we're actually running today for Imperfect Foods. Uh, it's going to their Portland location that will be in uh, all of Oregon, Washington, and over into Idaho. Um, we also have all of these potatoes that are being uh, cut in all of uh, California from Mexico, and then we go all the way up through Washington, uh, all the way up to Canada. Uh, the products is put into our retail bag. Um, it's a pound and a half bag of half inch cubes. So it'll, they'll take most of the air out of the bag and put it into the sealer, which will put a lock code and best buy date on it. Once it goes through the sealer, it'll go into um, cases of 25 bags. Everything that we uh, are cutting today is half inch cubes and it can be used in an assortment of different dishes. Um, as far as from you could just put it in a frying pan with some olive oil and garlic, onion, garlic salt, anything like that. Uh, you could also put it on a baking, di uh, baking sheet. And from there, uh, it can be used in a lot of different ways with a stir fry or uh, as many ways as you could imagine.